Modern medicine is incredible. Our life expectancy of the human race has gone up from 30 in 1900 all the way up to 60 and 73 in 2019. One of the main reasons for this is the advent of modern medicine, our understanding of germ theory and our scientific progress that made this technology possible where we can make medicines in bulk and make sure that everybody around the world can get it. So as a practitioner of modern medicine, I am a big fan. But that being said, there are some aspects of modern medicine that I think should be improved. But before we get into that topic, there are some things I would like to clear up. I'm a practicing doctor. I'm a neurologist. I did my MBBS from Grand Medical College in Mumbai, my MD Medicine from KEM Hospital in Mumbai, and my DM Neurology from SGPGI in Lucknow. So when I say that there are problems in modern medicine, it is only because I want to see improvement in those areas. So is our system perfect? No. And if we as practicing doctors don't admit to it, who is going to improve it? And that is the purpose of making this video. So with that out of the way, let me tell you five things that I don't like about modern medicine and I wish things would change in these areas. Number one, it is a blunt instrument. A large chunk of people who practice modern medicine or allopathic medicine are not trained in modern medicine. They're either trained in alternative medicine or they're not trained at all. That is, they are quacks. But the way that modern medicines are made, anyone can pop a pill and have the benefits, even if you don't really know how it works or what are the risks and the side effects, what are the clear indications to give this medicine and when to not. And ironically, because of how efficient these pills are made, they are being grossed misused. The amount of antibiotics and painkillers that people are being prescribed around the world is much higher than what it needs to be. And adding to this problem is self-prescription. People who have figured out that these tablets can be given for these problems and they will just go to a pharmacy and take the pill without consulting a medical professional. The risk involved in such behavior is huge. Antibiotic resistance is a serious problem that is now being faced across the world. And the main reason for this is indiscriminate antibiotic use. This needs to change. Number two, my second issue with modern medicine is that it is not personalized. When we read a textbook of modern medicine, most of the attention is on the disease, the physiology, the pathology, and the biochemistry of the disease itself. And very little attention attention is paid on the patient. What is the gender, the emotional state or the personality of the person suffering from the disease? We don't believe that these things matter. But that being said, in clinical practice, we have seen how the same disease can affect different people differently. And we've also seen how the same medicine for the same disease can have different effects on different people. So clearly there are other variables at play that we are not taking into account. Today, we know that stress levels, immunity levels, thinking patterns, even mindset does affect our autonomic and immune responses in the body and in the gut. So is it so far-fetched to think that a person's individual characteristics can have some impact on the way that a disease and a medicine acts on that person. I remember in medical college, a lot of my senior doctors would tell me to treat the patient, not the disease. This is because every doctor through years of clinical experience and trial and error learns the importance of looking at the patient as a whole and not just focusing on one disease and one drug. But this aspect of medicine is not reflected in the academics of modern medicine. So our students are not taught how important this is. I wish that this would change in the future. My third issue with modern medicine is the influence that the pharmaceutical industry has on the direction of research. Most of the biggest medical studies in the world are sponsored by pharmaceutical companies that have patents on the drugs being studied. If there are cheaper alternatives or lower dose trials, those studies may not get funding and so those randomized control trials may not even happen. In 2003, there was a study that was published in the prestigious JAMA journal that talked about the impact of industry funding on studies. And the paper said that corporate financing of these studies can lead to bias amongst the investigators. A 2022 paper published in Nature Journal showed how one out of four Australian studies did not disclose funding from pharma companies. And in 2013, there was an article published in Scientific American that showed how industry-sponsored studies were four times as likely to show a positive outcome 
for the drug as compared to government sponsored studies all this goes to show that while we are correctly relying on evidence to guide us forward we should also be mindful of how that evidence is collected and be honest with ourselves on what changes we need to make as a community to ensure robust evidence collection so we can continue to trust in this system the fourth issue that i have with modern medicine is rush to publish currently the academic success of a researcher in the medical field is calculated by the number of papers that they publish in high quality journals and everything depends on this their career growth their promotion whether they get tenure or not all of this depends on how many articles did they manage to publish every given year so naturally there is an urgency to get results out quickly this can lead to a bias for researchers to speed up the studies quicker and they may not often check the validity of the results before publishing this was evident during covid where prestigious journals like lancet and negm had to retract papers that they published because later on it turned out that the data was faulty it has also been noticed that studies that show a positive result is much more likely to get published than a study that shows a negative result so if you are a researcher looking to get published you can have a bias towards wanting a positive outcome of the study and finally the fifth issue that i have with modern medicine is knowing when to not treat modern medicine is aimed at curing pain reducing discomfort and curing whenever possible but because of the rapid increase in tests and awareness it has led to a situation called over diagnosis and over treatment diseases are identified at a very early stage even at a mild stage where no treatment is required only reassurance but because of hyper awareness and pressure on the doctor patients are likely to get prescribed more medicines than they need to be according to some estimates in the united states more than 200 billion dollars is spent on unnecessary treatment every year this is money that could have otherwise been used for patients who actually needed help so these are some things that i thought needed improvement in modern medicine this is not an exhaustive list this is also not a place where i will offer solutions because i believe that the solutions can only come from honest open conversations between all of us that is doctors practitioners of modern medicine and patients all of us have the same final goal in mind which is to improve health for everyone do i think the solution is to give up on modern medicine 100% no do i think the solution is alternative medicine also no i don't think that the solution to the problems of modern medicine is alternative medicine i think the solution is better modern medicine just held to higher standards and speaking of alternative medicine i believe that if any therapy or practice in alternative medicine works it should be put to the same rigorous testing and randomized control trials as modern medicine and proven and held to the same standards because as my friend pranav from sciences dope likes to say you know what we call traditional medicine that works it's medicine and on that note we are ending this video let me know what you guys think this is not the end of the conversation i know there is going to be a follow up video to this where i will be taking in comments from what you say below this video and uh, we will discuss more on this i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit the like button you can check more of my videos on difficult topics here and here and i will see you guys soon bye everyone take care